all in, get the edge you need to succeed. I am Dr. Erin McKinley, and today we have another awesome spotlight session with Carol Papillon and Amy LaFalse from the Virginia Tech Internship in Nutrition and Dietetics based in Blacksburg, Virginia. Welcome. Thank you for having us. All right. Before we jump into talking a little bit about your program, each tell me a little bit about your background, your journey to RD, and how you landed in your positions at Virginia Tech. Okay. Do you want to start, Amy? Sure. All right. I'll go first. Um, well, I started my career as a clinical dietitian. Um, dietetics is actually my second degree. I studied kinesiology in undergraduate and then went back and did a DPD program, um, thinking that I would be a sports dietitian, but turns out I really enjoyed my clinical rotations and I worked as a clinical dietitian um, for several years in medicine, surgery, critical care, and NICU. Um, before um, trying on some part-time jobs um, while I was in graduate school. And um, eventually I found Virginia Tech because I just really loved being a preceptor and being involved in dietetics education. So um, I've been with Virginia Tech now for um, almost eight years um, and it's exactly where I want to be. I love it. And I started my career as well in clinical dietetics. I started at University of Kentucky Medical Center, and I also worked at Duke University Medical Center. And then I decided also wanted to get more of a prevention perspective, and I got a master's of public health, which I've really enjoyed um, using throughout my career. Um, after that, um, I, I did some wellness programming and worked part-time, and then I did some nutrition counseling as a part-time position. And then I, this position came open as the internship director, and it just was something I've always wanted to do. And I had been a preceptor for years in most other settings I had worked. So I've really enjoyed being a program director, and Amy and I both think just really enjoy our work in dietetics education and helping um, interns as they find their niche in the profession. All right. Well, tell us all about your program. Okay, well, um, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. So these are, since you've already met us, this is Amy, uh, Northern Virginia Program Director, and I'm the Program Director here back in, in at, on campus in Blacksburg. And our program's called the Virginia Tech Internship Program in Nutrition and Dietetics. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. We're going to go about it through um, a who, what, when, where, and why approach. So who we are, what we can offer you. Uh, when do we accomplish everything? Where is our program located? And why consider Virginia Tech's internship? So this is a picture of the map of Virginia, since many of you probably have not, um, you know, considered maybe Virginia as an internship position. Um, I think you want to see what the map looks like. We have a really unique um, design where we have two locations of our program. So we've got Amy up in Northern Virginia, and I'm in Blacksburg, and we have 20 interns, 10 at each location. So this is the first day of our internship this year when the interns met each other. Um, you know, there is a group up in Northern Virginia and then a group here in Blacksburg. Of course, we are all masked up and we um, have been meeting in person a few times, but this year primarily doing more virtual meetings. Um, our interns are very diverse in the sense that they come from quite a few different DPD programs. Um, so this year we have 13 different DPD programs that are represented amongst our, um, our interns that are enrolled right now. So this is a snapshot of our program. We find it's helpful just to see the big picture of the program in one slide. So we have a nine-month program. So it's um, a, an affordable program. It costs $9,000 um, program fee, and it starts in August and ends in May. Um, we have three weeks of break within that time, or well, four weeks actually, one in Thanksgiving week, two weeks in winter break, and then a week in spring break. We have two locations, as we just showed you the slide on, Blacksburg and Northern Virginia. Um, and then we have um, the rotations assigned according to interns, goals, and interests. So our program is very individualized in the sense that as soon as interns match with the program, we provide them a survey we discuss um, with them their interests, their backgrounds, and what their needs are. And, and based on where their geographical location are, we, is we plan a, a program um, and rotations for their interests. Um, our, we have a leadership emphasis, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. And we have um, 
a program that's a non-credit program. So there's no graduate degree credits involved in our program. It's a certificate program. So it's, it's kind of a compact program, allows interns that come in and they can go out and, and they end up, you know, determining later if they want to earn that graduate degree based on interests that they have, or if they want to just, you know, maybe earn different types of professional certificates that like in specialty areas. So they have a lot of options within that certificate program design. All right. So Carol mentioned um, that, you know, our program emphasis is leadership and professional development. Um, and this is something that we really weave throughout um, throughout the program year. Um, so we really abide by this quote by John C. Maxwell, leadership is influence. And our goal is that the interns are going to um, gather the tools throughout the internship program and practice various leadership skills so that they're learning how to really be a positive influence on those around them. So whether that's at their rotation sites, whether that's, um, you know, being a positive influence within the profession, um, being a positive influence in the community. Um, we really want them to learn how to be a leader um, um, regardless of their position or their title, recognizing that interns and entry-level dietitians absolutely have the skills to be leaders, um, you know, within the profession. So it's helping them gain the, you know, the confidence and the competence in, in order to do that. Um, so we, um, we do a lot of different leadership and professional development exercises throughout the internship. It's a lot of readings and class discussions, um, a lot of self-reflection and journaling, um, our interns um, do a leadership project throughout the program year that, um, that they design on their own. And it's generally um, something that they're really proud of at the end that they get to put on their resume and um, something really tangible that they can discuss in job interviews, um, you know, in the future. So that's, um, that's a really popular aspect of our program. Um, and I think something else that's really unique about having the emphasis of leadership and professional development is that we really do attract candidates with the with varied backgrounds and goals and interests. So, you know, we're not just a whole, you know, program of future clinical dietitians or few future diabetes educators, which we need clinical dietitians and we need diabetes educators, but it's really great, I think, having a program where you have people with lots of interests and backgrounds because it really promotes, um, you know, rich discussions in the class setting. And it also creates a really supportive learning environment because people aren't going to be competing for all the same jobs at the end of, um, of the program, you know, after they graduate. So, um, so I think it's, um, it's, it's a favorite aspect of mine of our program. Um, and it's something that we hear from interns a lot that they, that they really value that leadership and professional development emphasis. Um, so I did just want to highlight, I know Carol mentioned it earlier that um, our program is really individualized according to each intern's needs and interests. And I think that, the leadership and professional development aspect is, is one example of that. Um, and we just really carry that through by, um, you know, by listening to what our interns goals are and, you know, helping them, um, you know, to, to develop the skills that, that they, um, that they're looking to develop to be effective in the practice setting of their choosing. Um, and we do find that our graduates work in all areas of dietetics practice. So, you know, we have clinical dietitians in long-term care, acute care, outpatient settings. Um, you know, we have graduates that go on to work in school nutrition or, um, community settings like WIC or Head Start. They go into private practice, research, sports, nutrition, um, just a variety of different fields. So, um, so I think that, yeah, the, the, the emphasis of leadership and professional development is kind of a common denominator among us. So this is just a picture of um, kind of a graphic of our um, calendar. Um, so what, what it would be like to be an intern with Virginia Tech um, in terms of what you'd be doing at any given time. So, you know, we follow a modified academic calendar. So, um, you know, Virginia Tech's calendar. So our interns start the program at late, in late August. Um, and we start with um, orientation for two weeks, which is both an orientation to the internship as a whole, and then also orientation to medical nutrition therapy in their clinical rotations. Um, and what's really unique about orientation is um, the interns are meeting in class for three days a week, and then they're going to their sites for two days a week. Um, so they really have an opportunity to ease in um, and gain some, you know, some comfort in the clinical setting, and then also to have some shared experiences in the classroom um, and, um, and learn from each other and a lot of discussion at that point. So it really promotes a, you know, a sense of camaraderie and community from the beginning. 
So our MNT component is 14 weeks long, um, and that takes us um, through most of the fall. Um, most of our interns are going to do the bulk of their clinical rotations at one primary site. In many cases, that's going to be, you know, a hospital system or a specific hospital. And then we'll add other sites um, to gain like a comprehensive experience um, as needed. So an example of that might be doing, you know, maybe, you know, 10 weeks of acute care at one hospital and then going somewhere else to do two weeks of long-term care in a different, um, at a different hospital or a long-term care facility, and then maybe two weeks of outpatient um, experiences, you know, depending on the intern's interests. It might be, you know, um, dialysis, or it might be, you know, diabetes education, or, um, or you know, an outpatient oncology practice, um, just depending on, you know, what the intern's interests are. Um, so after um, the MNT component, um, the interns will start um, the community component, um, which is eight weeks long, and that's longer than many, many other programs are. We use the community component um, as an opportunity to really kind of individualize the, um, you know, the, the calendar for each intern based on their interests. So a community rotation might be um, you know, at, you know, with a WIC program or um, school nutrition, um, but it could also be something like, um, you know, nutrition communications or um, working more in an outpatient setting um, or doing, um, you know, something like we have up here in the Northern Virginia area where I'm located, we have some unique, um, you know, food and nutrition policy opportunities and Carol has those, you know, as well for those interns or even sports nutrition, you know, an opportunity to work with Virginia Tech Athletics. Um, in most cases, um, each intern is going to do um, two community rotations that are about four weeks long each. Um, and we aim to schedule them in two really different sites with different, you know, target audiences and different funding sources so they can really get contrasting experiences and see what it would be like, um, you know, to work as a dietitian in those two varied settings. After community nutrition, um, our interns will do um, management of food and nutrition services. So that'll be one six-week rotation. Um, that could be um, at a hospital um, food service operation. It could be through public schools. could be long-term care. Um, we utilize Virginia Tech Dining um, on campus down in Blacksburg. Um, or um, some years, we also have a corporate site that could be available. Um, so that's generally one rotation um, one site for six weeks for each intern. And then interns finish the year up doing their two week elective. And that is completely their choice. So they get to think about that during the year, what they, you know, what they want their culminating experience to be. Um, and it might be something completely different than they've never done before. Um, for example, you know, working with a dietitian on a military base or um, trying a new population. You know, maybe they didn't get to do pediatrics earlier, but they really want to try, you know, pediatric nutrition um, or NICU, you know, nutrition for their elective. Um, some interns use that elective opportunity to go to a different geographic location. If they know they're going to be moving somewhere after the program, um, then they may want to use that opportunity to do some networking and, and, um, and meet some dietitians, you know, in the area where they're going to be living, do a rotation there. Or in some cases, you know, interns know they want to be applying for clinical jobs and, um, and it's been a little while since they've done their clinical rotations. So they choose to use their elective as like a clinical refresher, you know, either back at the site that they, you know, the hospital where they did most of their rotations or, you know, going to a different um, setting to try out, um, you know, a different clinical experience. But, um, but that is the intern's choice, what they decide to do. You'll also see in that gray font there, um, if you're looking at the slides, um, that we do have um, some breaks that are that are built into the program. Um, that's always really popular. You know, being a being a dietetic intern is it's a lot of work. You know, all dietetic internship programs involve a lot of work because you're, you know, you're you're going to work and then you're going to class and then you've got homework assignments on top of that. So um, so we do build in those breaks. We find that it's really really important for that work life balance to have some time to get some kind of personal rejuvenation and feel ready to come back to, to learn and work. So our interns get a week off for Thanksgiving. They get two weeks off um, in, in December and early January, and then they get a week for spring break also. Um, so that's, that's another popular aspect of our program and helps everybody. It's like a work hard, play hard, um, you know, design there. Um, is there anything else there about that calendar that I forgot to mention, Carol? I believe so. I think you did a good job. I think um, we sometimes 
flip the management and community experience just to make the best use of the resources that we have and what the interns want as far as their scheduling. So if there's an opportunity that wouldn't be available, you know, but other than that, I think it's really just a very, um, you know, kind of nice step. I think the one thing too is that having all the interns doing similar kind of components at the same time really allows interns to compare and contrast their experiences and share and expand their own experiences by hearing from experiences from one of their peers. When we talk about clinical or community or management experiences. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, our class days, um, I think it's really great to be able to meet every week um, because the interns really learn a lot from each other um, and to see, you know, what, what they're doing at their various sites and how, um, you know, being a clinical dietitian at one hospital that may be, you know, a 900 bed teaching hospital that's a trauma center is going to be really different than more of a community setting. And they really get to learn from each other and share those experiences, which is really, I think, beneficial for everyone. Um, and I'm glad that you brought up too how we can kind of rearrange the calendar sometimes to take advantage of different opportunities um, that are available at specific times to meet interns' interests. I think it's it's great having that flexibility and and being able to um, um, you know to adapt as needed so that we can um, you know really do things with the with the interns' best interest in mind. So one thing we definitely wanted to point out about our program, since, you know, some of the listeners and viewers may not be, you know, familiar with Virginia Tech and our program design is um, that we do have those two locations. So, you know, I'm based in the Washington, D.C. area um, in northern Virginia. I only I live five minutes from Washington, D.C. Um, and Carol lives um, near campus in Blacksburg in southwest Virginia. Um, so when interns are applying to our program, they apply to the northern Virginia site or the Blacksburg site. So it's not just luck of the draw. You don't just find out where you're gonna be. You apply to one site or the other. Um, and then even within those two sites, there's some degree of flexibility as to where to live. Um, you know, we meet for class in Northern Virginia um, in um, on our campus, it's in Falls Church. It's kind of an inner suburb um, of DC um, located in, in Northern Virginia. But our interns live all around the DC area because our sites are all over the DC area. So, um, you know, we have um, candidates that apply to our program and they might want to live with a family member that's, you know, an hour or in some cases two hours outside of Washington, D.C. Um, or, you know, similarly um, for the Blacksburg site, candidates may live in Blacksburg or they may live in, in, in areas that are, you know, in other areas of southwest Virginia or even beyond because we do have rotation sites that are um, geographically diverse in, in that regard. So, um, you know, I want to emphasize to to your listeners here that if, you know, if you think that Virginia Tech may be something that interests you um, and you have, you know, a family member or a friend that, that lives somewhere within the vicinity of the DC area or Southwest Virginia, you're not sure that that would be a reasonable location, but you know, you want to explore that opportunity as a way to save some money by, you know, living, living, um, staying with somebody that, you know, definitely reach out to us because, um, because we, we do have a, a, a little bit of flexibility there. Um, and we'd love to talk with you to see, you know, what, where, where that location might be so that we could see if maybe that, that could work for you. Um, we do have, um, about 60 um, supervised practice sites. So 60, you know, hospitals, community agencies, school systems, private practice dietitians, just about 60 different sites that we send our interns to each year with over 140 total preceptors. So, um, so you know, a lot of opportunities um, in various, you know, geographic locations. So sort of to wrap up, to summarize some of the reasons why you might want to consider Virginia Tech, I think um, interns, choose this program because they want to hone their interests and find their professional niche. So it may be that they don't really know what they want to do in the field. They know they have multiple interests. And I think that interns really find those professional interests through trying on different roles for size. So 100% of our graduates state that their individual needs and interests were met, which we're thrilled about. Um, the compact program results in early job availability. So 80% of our graduates are employed within three months. And that um, means by the end of the summer, m many of them have jobs. And, and I think the thing that's interesting about that is because we finish a bit earlier, like this year, it's May 7th. We were one of the earliest programs to graduate. So 
you know, interns have more accessibility to jobs earlier. Um, another thing that's a real benefit and why interns choose or applicants choose our program to apply to is it's a lower cost than a program with graduate credits. While graduate degree is a good choice for some people, some people want to go ahead and get their credentials out of the way so that they can determine what they really want to study further or how they want to proceed with their future um, career. And um, the other thing is that it, um, our interns like the idea that they build leadership skills. So we don't expect people to come in with strong leadership skills. We just want them to have an interest in influencing the profession. So 67% of our graduates serve in some sort of leadership positions or roles within the first year. It might be a significant role on a committee, a clinical committee, or it might be an organization like a local dietetics association where they're the webmaster or they're in some sort of elected role. So it's, it's a good opportunity for them to build those confidence. I feel like one of the, my philosophies is that if individuals are able to do things in a safe environment that are challenging, then they're more likely to take a chance in the future to be a leader in a situation. So they become leaders a lot throughout the internship year in different situations. And that just gives them that confidence to be leaders as professionals. And then we have this huge alumni network. We have 430 graduates who have completed our program and many of our preceptors and just we just have a lot of mentors who will help um, a Virginia Tech intern, you know, in finding their, their niche. So just recently I connected one of my current interns with an alum from um, our program who's in Atlanta and she wants to move to Atlanta and she's really wanting to network and start to get to know people in Atlanta. So she's ready to find her job when the time comes. So it's been a real joy to be able to stay in touch with all our alumni and also just connect them with our current interns. So if you want to know more, we have one more uh, virtual open house scheduled for this year. Um, it's on Friday, January 8th at 10 a.m. And you can RSVP at our website. And or if you want to just contact either Amy or I with any additional questions about our program, just go ahead and reach out by email. We can arrange a Zoom meeting or just um, answer your questions by email. So I think that's all. Oh, before I forget, Virginia Tech does have another program in dietetics to prepare um, in um, dietetics uh, dietitians. And it's uh, one of the future education model programs. It's an MS in nutrition and dietetics. And we just graduated our first cohort. And so if you think you might want to do a graduate program through Virginia Tech, you might look at that program. Um, so now we're ready to answer any questions that you have. About our program. All right. Thank you for that overview. Very informative. So I'm going to jump right into the five questions that I ask all guests that come on the podcast. And these questions were put together with the help of my students to really uh, make sure we were asking the, the tough questions of directors to, to really get at what they are looking for uh, for applicants to their program, as well as other information. So the first one, and however you want to answer these is up to you. If you want to split it or each give an answer, it's totally, totally your decision. But what is one thing that you especially love to see when you're reading a personal statement? Oh my, we might have different answers on this. <laughs> um, I'll start if you want, and then you can fill in. We might have different things. I personally really like when a personal statement, when I finish reading a personal statement, I feel like I know that person. And I feel like especially I like it when it ties in with the rest of the whole application packet. So it seems like it flows um, and you you know, they've spoken about their own um, background and interests in a way that makes you feel like you know them. So Amy, what you tell them what you think. I would definitely agree with that. I think, um, you know, I, I love when a personal statement truly is, is, is personable, you know, professional, but still personable so that I can finish it and think, oh, wow, I really feel like, you know, I have an idea of, of, of who this candidate is. Um, I, um, I also really love when I read through a personal statement and I can see that the candidate has really thought about 
what they want out of an internship program and what their professional goals are, you know, as when they become a dietitian. So they really thought that through and they know how to communicate that in their personal statement. But at the same time, they're flexible and open minded and really are just excited to learn and and be open to the new experiences that we can offer. Because, um, you know, sometimes some truly unique opportunity, you know, lands in our laps and we want to be able to, to let can, you know, interns take advantage of those opportunities. So we're, we're definitely looking for interns that, um, that are going to have that initiative and self-direction and the organizational skills, you know, to, um, to, um, to be successful, um, you know, in a, in a rapidly changing environment, but also to be open-minded um, and ready to, you know, to take risks and take chances take chances and, and try out new things when opportunities arise. I have something more to add. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Maybe think about it. Um, I do feel like it's helpful when the applicant indicates the reason in a way that's clear that tie how their experience and interests tie in with our program design. So that feels like it's a good match for us. Yeah, that helps us really start thinking about Oh, where where do we think you know we might want to place that applicant at sites? It it it, it makes it a lot more um, I think real you know for us as program directors. I think it also helps to know why you know like any connection they've had with the program. So let's say they have a reason they really want to be in Virginia, or they talk with a current a former intern, or they know a former intern or they talked with a current intern or they met with Amy or I, because I feel like we have a committee that helps in the selection. So they don't always know the context that, that you've made if you're an applicant. So I think that's another thing. You keep thinking of things. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. We'll move on to the next question, which is a true or false question. And true or false, an applicant's resume should be one page and one page only. Either way, why? I I'm gonna I'm gonna say it depends. Um, and the reason I'm gonna say it depends is because there's no cookie cutter applicant at all. You know, we recognize that applicants have very different backgrounds, and you know, to our program, you know, we have applicants that have you know, small amounts of work experience. And then we have applicants that maybe this is their second career and they, it's impossible for them to condense, you know, you know, a a 10 or even 20 year career into a one page resume. So it really just depends on the applicant's background. And I think, you know, if you, if this is, um, you know, your, your first, your first bachelor's degree and you haven't, um, you know, worked in a full-time job before, then one page is going to be su- sufficient for, for most applicants that would, that would have a background similar to that. Um, and if you're struggling to condense it into one page, then I would say, think about what's most important to you as an applicant, what experiences have best prepared you for the internship focus on those and let the noise kind of fall away because you don't need to include you know, every single, you know, one day of shadowing that you had or every single, um, you know, service project that you did, if it didn't contribute something significant to your preparation. Um, We don't count the hours of experience per se. And, you know, that that extra four hours you got at the local food pantry is not going to make a difference, (laughs) you know, at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's, It's much more complicated than that. So I would say, um, you know, think about what experiences have best prepared you for the internship that were most meaningful to you, you know, as an applicant and talk about those. And some of those may be food and nutrition related experiences, but some of them may not be. And that's OK. I think that, you know, whether this is your first career or your third career, or whatever, um, you know, there are many jobs that have nothing to do with food and nutrition that have tons of transferable skills that you're learning. Um, you know, whether that's something that you did to help pay the bills while you were a college student or, um, you know, something that you did over the summer or, um, you know, or, or a prior career. So think about what you learned through that job and how that's going to help you as an intern and later as a dietitian. And those are the things that you want to emphasize on your resume. I will just affirm what Amy said. I think she um, did a great job of covering the answer. I would agree that one or two is not really as big of a deal. I am impressed and pleased when people are effective and 
condensing their resume when they're traditional students to one page and keeping it pretty direct. Um, I think that's a, that there's value to that. You mentioned that buzz phrase for 2020, transferable skills. I think I say it a hundred times a day now when I don't think I ever said it before this year. So that is definitely the 2020 phrase. Right. Well, I think, I think a lot of students are concerned because they weren't able to do summer experiences last summer. And I think that is definitely something where you have to realize that others are having similar issues, but also just what, what have you done that has benefited you and how did you handle that, you know, in different ways? All right. Well, my third question is, what are some things or a thing that an applicant may do either in their application package or maybe in an interaction that you have with them, email or an open house or a Zoom discussion where it raises some red flags for you to where you may say, I don't think this person is a good fit for our program. I mean, I think it probably goes without saying and you're, you're, you know, your, your students are smart. They know that they need to proofread, proofread, proofread. Um, and I think, you know, that's going to apply to their resume. That's going to apply to all aspects of their application. That's going to apply to any email correspondence as well. Um, I think, you know, I think that's, that's certainly important. Um, I think one thing that I notice is when, a, when, a, when a candidate does ask questions, um, and I like to put a lot of thought into responding to their questions um, and to, to really, you know, answer, answer as comprehensively as I can. Um, I do notice if they don't respond to my, to my response, if that makes any sense. Um, I think that um, it has me wondering, you know, when a preceptor is, is giving of their time, um, you know, if they become that, you know, an intern of ours and a preceptor's giving of their time, which they do, you know, you want to know that that intern is going to be appreciative and, 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 um, and, and recognize that the commitment that the preceptor has, has given to them as a student. So um, it's a very simple thing, I think, to do, but, um, but that, that's definitely something that I've noticed in the past. Yeah, I think the other thing I would add to that would be um, when, when we, when I have contacts, if an individual asks a question that's readily available on the website, that's not the best image. I'm, again, I would like to reinforce that with any candidate, we're looking at the big picture. So if somebody has a little glitch in some one thing, it's not like, oh, you know, the person's off the list. So we definitely understand how challenging it is to deal with all the aspects of this application process. So we're, we're sensitive to that. But again, you know, that's one thing that's probably not the best image for somebody. All right, moving right along. What is one area of the program that you're actively working on trying to make even better for your interns? You know, I think <laughs> one thing that's come up for us this year is, you know, we've had to change, we've had to let it make a lot of changes related to the pandemic. And, you know, as, as probably all programs have this year. And I think, one thing that we've it's kind of opened our eyes to is how being flexible in more I mean I think that we are a very flexible program to begin with but some of the changes that we've had to make to to be even more flexible in some ways we're realizing maybe those are some things that we that we want to try to continue in the future because we can see how it's benefiting our interns and and frankly many of our preceptors and sites as well so um, you know, we, as Carol mentioned earlier, we've been doing the majority of our class meetings on Zoom. And as much as we miss seeing our interns every week in the classroom, and we will absolutely go back to having in-person class meetings, I think we will, we will, we will carry Zoom meetings with us into the future, you know, maybe, you know, once a month, um, so that, you know, there is, you know, that time where the interns can come to class in their pajamas and not have to deal with rush hour traffic and commuting and just have a, you know, an, an easier day at home. Our, our, you know, we've gotten feedback that, that, that that's been kind of a, um, you know, a positive thing for them in some ways. You know, we, we miss being, you know, face to face in, in person for class days. Um, and, you know, we're fortunate our interns have been able to go in person for their rotations, um, which has been really great. But, um, but I think, you know, just some of those, some of those things that we've discovered during the pandemic in terms of flexibility and remote conferencing and um, 
pooling our resources more, you know, between having more classes, joint class days between, you know, Carol's interns and my interns together and kind of just effectively utilizing our resources that way. Um, I think that's something that we'd like to we'd like to continue to improve upon because we've seen that there's a lot of advantages there. Yeah, in the short term, I think starting in the first year, I'm going to try to challenge interns to help me figure out ways of helping them connect more socially, even if it's not in person. Um, I haven't really had the time to think too much about that because I've been prioritizing, you know, what we really are here for, which is making sure they have good experiences and good classes. But I think we don't want them to come away without. And I think they do feel connected because we do a lot of um, joint discussions and that. But I feel like that's something. And I think the other thing for us that we, it's a pretty unique design to have two directors. And so every summer we just start a list of things that we're going to work on the next summer. And then as the summer comes around, we are able to update the program to, you know, reflect things that we just noticed, um, you know, that we feel like our interns could benefit from. So for sure in the coming year, I I think we're going to definitely be delving into more of the diversity issues related to, we have always addressed diversity in healthcare and health disparities, but I think we're going to continue to build that into the program as well. Yes, it's a huge part of leadership. Mm -hmm. That'd be very beneficial. Yeah, there's a a new buzzword of value-based healthcare that I think that we used to, you know, the, the buzzword of uh, about five years ago was social determinants of health, which is really predominant now as well. But I think value-based health care is going to impact our profession if we can show how we can add value in health care and in more ways than we already have, then I think we're going to have a bigger place at the table. Exactly. All right. So this last question in the in the five questions is a two-parter. And so the first part is, what would be the three best adjectives or descriptors or phrases that you feel best describes your program overall? I'm going to start with flexible. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good one. I think it's really helped us this year when we've had to make some adjustments to our schedule. Some programs have don't have the capacity to do that as easily. We've had a lot of capacity to be adaptable where we've adjusted our schedule to give the interns the best experience despite some opportunities not being available to them this year. And that, that's also available. I even have an intern doing kind of a unique pathway this year for her individual needs. So you take the next word, Amy. I'm just going to say dynamic, which is in some ways a little bit similar, I'd say, to flexible. But, um, but you know, the reason I'm thinking that it's dynamic is because Um, not only, you know, are we flexible and that we can, you know, change and be adaptable as needed, but, but we're dynamic in that, you know, there are always new opportunities and, you know, Carol and I both really embrace when those new opportunities come and we get really excited about incorporating them into our program and to challenging our interns. And so I think our program is really one where, um, you know, Interns are going to have a lot of unique opportunities um, and, you know, what what we might talk about with them in the spring, in the summer, that that in some ways can change because because we're dynamic and, 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 and new opportunities arise and, and we don't shy away from things like that. So it's exciting for for our interns um, and, um, and exciting, I think, you know, for us as directors, because no two years are, are the same in, in any way. They're always very different based on, um, you know, who our interns are and, you know, the, the sites that we're utilizing and our preceptors and, um, you know, just like the profession is dynamic. You know, I think as you're preparing future professionals, you, you also need to, to, um, to be dynamic as well. Okay, so we need a third word. Every time I think of some of ties in, like I was thinking forward thinking, but I think that relates to that as well. Um, do you have another word? Well, I have something in mind and it's not, it's definitely not a buzzword. So I'm trying to come up with a better way to describe it. But I think that the word I'm thinking of is applicable, um, which sounds really boring, but it's not. What I mean by it is everything you do in our internship program, you're going to use it. There's just, there's not, 
I, I, I really do think that we have, we don't have busy work in our program. You know, our assignments are really good learning opportunities. You know, all of our rotations, whether it's something that the intern wants to do with their career or not, you know, they're going to learn something really valuable, transferable skills, go back to that <laughs> important phrase. Um, they're going to learn how to apply that in their future career as a dietitian. And so, I think that our program, there's very little dead space, you know, in our program, it's compact and our interns work really hard, but there's a reason for everything. So um, everything has its place. And and that's definitely something that our graduates and then our alumni, you know, years down the road will say to us, you know, I'm so glad I learned that skill. Um, You know, and when we, when we had that class day or that assignment, you know, I learned so much from it and I'm using it now, you know, I've been a dietitian for five, six, seven years. And I'm so glad I learned that. I didn't realize how important that was. So those moments like that, I, I, I enjoy those because it really reinforces that what we're doing at Virginia Tech is, is, is helpful. And it's really preparing our graduates to be effective dietitians in, in whatever setting they, they choose to be in. Yeah, I think that I can't remember that, that we don't hear interns say, well, I'm not sure what the purpose of doing this is, you know, so um, I like that, you know, mm-hmm. it's well honed. All right. Well, the second half of that question is very similar. It would be three adjectives, phrases, or descriptors to describe your ideal applicant. Uh, hmm. Those are tough ones. It's really hard to come up with three for an ideal applicant because we really like having people that are different from each other. So, um, so we wouldn't want three, you know, we wouldn't want all of our interns to have the same three qualities. Um, you know, everybody brings their own strengths and that, that makes our program as a whole a lot stronger because everybody's so different from each other and they learn from each other and they contribute different things and teach each other different things and help us grow and improve our program in different ways. Um, so I think three is really hard. But yeah, I got one. I got one. Got it. Okay. Balanced. So, you know, we want people that have, you know, their solid grades. So they have their knowledge coming in. You kind of need some knowledge because you can't really learn during the internship things that you should have learned during your DPD program, you know, some exposure and comfort with working with people through your experience. And then, you know, just, um, you know, just, you know, some good references that people that can speak on your behalf. So I think the balance is more important than, you know, the best grades or, you know, the best experience. So I think initiative is also important. That's something that I, that I am looking for, you know, when I'm reviewing an application, Um, you know, I want to see that an applicant has sought out opportunities that has, um, and again, I know this, you know, applicants right now that are, you know, dealing with, um, cancellations and things that they weren't able to do because of the pandemic, you know, we recognize that, but initiative in being, you know, that they, um, you know, took the initiative to read the website, to come to an open house, to, to listen to this podcast, you know, that they took the initiative to get involved in the Student Dietetic Association or to attend professional meetings, you know, to just to, um, you know, to, to learn more about various aspects of the field, um, you know, initiative to work and to volunteer, just initiative in various, in various ways, because, that's going to be predictive of their success as an intern and later as a leader in the dietetics profession, just having that um, initiative in, in various ways. So that was, was that three? That was three, right? Maybe two. Was it? Mm. <laughs> Please the third one as the, what you bring to the table as an applicant, since you want, <laughs> you want a little bit of, a little bit of variety. Right. All right. So I have a couple of more questions that I jotted down while you were, Uh, going through the program detail that these are questions that I I feel are common that students come up with about how many applicants do you or applications do you receive every year? Yeah, we have a number, but it's somewhere around 100, 95 to 109 is what I remember from the last three years. And that's for 20 spots. This year we had 16, have been 16 interns. We, we reeled it back a little just to make sure we could fill everybody's experiences. But um, yeah. 
And that's mm -hmm. combined for both locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And through the class, the class time that you have together, do you utilize some of that time to be reviewing RD exam material or do you require the interns to complete an exam review towards the end of their time with you? How is that set up to where you're really making sure that when they leave, they are passing that exam? Well, they do pass exams, so that's a good thing. Um, 100% in the first year, 92% the first attempt. Um, it, historically, we've woven in some exam questions um, through different assignments throughout the program. One of the leadership positions last year and this year has been for an intern. She's initiated um, sending out RD exam questions twice a week to her peers and so um, we don't actually have like a review course that's required for the interns to take. We just leave it up to them. They, we share information from past interns about what they use and what they would recommend. And so there's some mentoring going on with that. Uh, we definitely encourage them to study and to take a review course if they feel that's, that would help them. I think it's usually most of them, many of them do. All right. So thinking about the fact that the program is, everything is really um, put in those, that short period of time, do you have interns in the past or currently that choose to enroll in online master's programs to try to get that rolling? Or is that not something that's, that's recommended as far as the time commitment? It would be hard. Um, it would be hard. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. We've had, we've had a few interns that have started a master's program before enrolling in the internship program, and they'll kind of put it on hold and then finish it when they finish the program. Um, but I, I, I do think it would be difficult to be a master's student while being, um, you know, doing our internship program at the same time. Um, That'd we would cool. say that, um, I mean, we have interns that do some pretty impressive things to balance with their internships, but we do make it very clear that whatever they take on separately from the internship doesn't impact our expectations for their performance in the internship. So, so you're not, you wouldn't tell an intern, no, you can't work. It's like work if you, you need to around everything. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think everybody has a different ability. Some people can't work and really focus and do a good job. Other people can work a lot of hours and it just helps them to be more organized. Um, we don't encourage it, but, you know, these days and anytime people sometimes have to work and we, you know, support them as they need to do that. And, you know, but we don't really expect them to not perform well on their sites because that's their one chance to be at that site and to to gain that experience. Give us one last take home message to potential applicants. Take home message, you know, if you're interested, come to our open house. It's on, you know, January 8th. Um, you can RSVP on our website. Um, and if you, you can't come to that, um, or even if you can, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to Carol or to me, introduce yourself. Um, you know, we'd love to meet you and hear about your interests and, you know, see if, um, you know, what, what we can do for you um, as an intern. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with me this evening. And for those at home who may be interested in the program at Virginia Tech, I've provided the website uh, in the description below this video so you can get in contact with Carol or Amy uh, when you need to. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode with another dietetic internship. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much.